A red October sky floated above San Bernardino in 2007, as it found itself engulfed in a series of episodic wildfires that for two weeks would plague seven different counties and only ended in the burning of over half a billion acres of Southern California. 14,000 of those acres burned came fate to the San Bernardino Mountain community. The forest had barely recovered from the old fire in 2003 that stretched over 90,000 acres, even burning onto the campus of Cal State San Bernardino. But on October 22nd, the Grass Valley Fire and Slide Fires began on the same day, burning for over a week and destroying over 446 homes. People that once owned a cozy mountain home came back to see their houses extinguished in a pile of rubble and twisted metal. Streets that were once cluttered with luxurious mountain estates now laid desolate with crumbling foundations. Strips of concrete and closed driveways are all that remain from what were former cozy mountain homes that looked over a green forested mountainside and down into the Inman Empire. One of those homes belonged to the family of Eric Apprentice. It was her mom and dad's dream house, as she put it. Even after evacuating in 2003, and under mandatory evacuation orders in 2007, Erica still couldn't imagine losing the place she grew up in. She told me that this was going to be our house. It was scary. It was more real than this one, but I was like, oh, not my house. Like, maybe my friend will lose their house. Like people that cross valley or something. Not mine. The trip back to her neighborhood from evacuation was not filled with the joyful feeling to be back home, but a poignant and mournful moment once her family saw what they had actually come back to. My our next door neighbors had lost their house on our right side. Yes. Uh, and then like the house on our left side was still there. And then like the ones like, across the street had lost their house, but like the one just around the corner was still there. It was so weird. It would be like a house would still be standing in the middle like of like a bomb went off. A four-bedroom home, fully furnished with years of family memories, sat crumpled and heaped into a pile of debris. It's so weird. Like, it was emotional, but like, it was just like, you know, like this used to be our parking deck, and like, it's all there, and like, you know, I mean, a big cement driveway, and like, it used to like go down into like another garage, and like, it's just like onto to rubble, and like, it was just a big pile of just like, ash and like junk. The emotional toll of the loss was too much for her mother, as the family decided they couldn't rebuild on the plot where they once had their dream home. The memories of their previous lives there would be forever tainted by the destruction that ended it. Her father, Lauren, a real estate agent, was able to find a rental almost immediately after losing their former home. Her family ended up rebuilding in Cedar Glen, a community that was partially tarnished by the old fire in 2003. Another girl, in the same high school graduating class of Erica, Amalia Hay, her family had also suffered the same tragic loss, losing their Green Valley Lake home her own father had grown up in as a child. During the evacuation, Amalia and her family were left in complete uncertainty about the fate of their home. In fear of the one road going into the valley would be closed off by the blaze, firefighters were forced to pull out of her neighborhood while the slide fire uncontainably swept over the town of Green Valley Lake. Amalia's family relied on insider information from a local firefighter contact. There were so many fires in Southern California. So it was like, even if they weren't talking about our fire, it was in San Diego or in L.A. County. And like, it was just fire, 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 fire. And you just wanted to get away from it. If we'd just been watching the news, we wouldn't have known at all. So we finally just stopped because we couldn't take it anymore. Mm. It was just like, uh, <laughs> no. Being only 16, the enormity of the entire situation was yet to be understood by Amalia. The destruction that had transpired appeared strange and surreal to her, even standing amidst the ashes of her former home. Her backyard, once filled with oak trees she had climbed and conquered, were now left with black scars on their bark and branches. They would have to be cut down, leaving a bare reminder of what could not be recovered. To get anything back was going to be a struggle. Insurance companies require claims to have a thorough, itemized list of every single thing in your home in order to be properly reimbursed. Despite the emotional wear and tear it took on her family, the Hayes planned to rebuild, rebuild in a community in which they never wanted to leave, even when the day they would move into their new home seemed all too distant. For years after the fire, 
Her parents stressed and drained themselves over planning and rebuilding another home that would lie on the same plot of land. The process of rebuilding was horrible, like absolutely horrible. And my poor parents were just like under so much stress. I mean, my dad, he had his normal job and then he came home and he was working on building this house and like organizing the building and it took we moved into this house Thanksgiving weekend in 2010. So it was three years of building. And when we moved in, it still like wasn't finished. Although safe and secure in a new home, Amalia described to me how crushed she was to lose all of her beloved books and the fire that destroyed her house. Her favorite bedtime stories read to her when she was a child would never be touched by her own. There was one book, though, that did remind Amalia how some things would never change, like the friendship she shared with her closest friend. A scrapbook put together with magazine cutouts and handwritten poems silently comforted her, knowing that she'd always have the true thing she cared about with or without a home. Although the inherent fire risk of living in the San Bernardino Mountains is widely understood, no one can understand the emotional strength it takes to recover from losing the place you once called your home until it is experienced. Five years after the event, Amalia nor Erica have allowed this traumatizing event to set them back in their lives. Amalia currently works for a hospital, aspiring to become a nurse. And Erica now lives with her boyfriend while in pursuit of a bachelor's degree and teaching credential here at Cal State San Bernardino. However, the memories of October 2007 will forever remain in their minds.